It is a beautiful evening. The sun is probably going to start setting here pretty soon. And I just went and checked on some of the apples and seen if any of them fell. And look at what I just found inside of the tree. <laughs> there they are. And then I see that <laughs> the tree caught the red fleshed apple. It's one of the bigger ones as well. Bigger ones for this particular type of tree. Puts out a lot more individual apples. Whereas my other variety, that guy over there, it puts out larger apples, but it puts out fewer of them. You can also tell that the tree is pretty huge. But for some reason it didn't get pollinated. I should have gone through with the Q-tip. But this one got pollinated nicely. I had 18 apples total. And they're all ripening up and slowly falling off. So, I'm going to take that apple before it actually falls on the ground. I'm going to take it in. I've already had several of these apples, so I'm going to store it in the fridge. And I'm going to eat it on a different day. On another beautiful day, I hope. Because this sure would be a beautiful day to eat it. But, we're going to save it. Let's go for a little walk. I've had a few buddies try these apples and what one of them said is that they in general seem to be pretty flawless or at least the ones that I had them try. Most of the damage that's been caused to them has been um, physical. It hasn't been pests, it hasn't been disease, which is really nice. And I think it might have something to do with the fact that there's, uh, you know, the anthocyanins from the red flesh, like helping to stave off some of that possibly. I did have apple maggots one year, but for the most part, it's uh, not too bad. I did spray them with um, a pyrethrin in the beginning when the leaves first came out in the spring. But that's really all I did. And that was to, in order to uh, try and prevent those apple maggots to take over in the beginning. And it's been very successful. Before that I had never done anything and gotten really nice apples. They are really pretty. This is a good one too. This sure is a beautiful setting. Perfect to try a nice apple, I would say. Let's take a little bite out of this. Mmm. They're very crisp. It's the first thing you notice. So good. These are by far my most favorite apples. And it is not because I'm growing them myself. It's because they're amazing. That red part on the outside, you really get that berry flavor. I keep trying to identify what berry I'm specifically tasting. Sometimes I'm getting strawberry, other times I'm getting cherry. If they're a little bit more on the sour end, it's mostly mostly cherry, I would say. I had one yesterday, a smaller one, and that was had no tartness to it whatsoever. It was just sweet. This one isn't that tart either. I think it just has to do with the ripening. ripening. It just has like that crispness of a really good apple. It's got the flavor of an apple. But then you just get more than just up. You just get that berry notes coming through it as well. So good. I'm really hoping in a couple of years you'll see these in the supermarkets. So good. This whole uh, strain of varieties is called Red Love. I can really recommend them. Growing them yourself. As I've stated before, I personally found it online. I knew about them. 
but then I found a nursery that, um, you know, sold them. And that's really all you have to type in is just Red Love. Type it in um, around the autumn, you know, winter time before uh, bare root season begins because that's how I got them. I got them bare root. You need another one to cross pollinate with it. This has most apples. Better than mine though, but they kind of flower during uh, specific, you know, times, like around the same time. Really good. Kind of drops off right here. Ooh. I do also grow out the seeds as well. So those little seeds. What I do is, um, I cross, this is my smaller apple, but produces more apples variety, <laughs> which is called a Disso. And then I have another variety that produces larger apples, but fewer of them because they're larger. That one is called Calypso. And I cross these two together. And then the seedlings that I get out of that, I make sure that they're red fleshed, which I can tell because the new growth has um is red the leaves are red the bark is red and then usually as the leaves get older they kind of transition into into being more green but like um red veining usually but again that varies too because they're all grown from seed so that you get varieties there but i make sure that they're at least red fleshed which i can tell because like i said from the red notes that the leaves and the bark gets and I grow those out and hopefully one day I'll get my own variety out of it essentially and I have red first apples that from a tree that I cross pollinated and those I can hopefully sell maybe in the future I'm not sure about it yet but um, I'm not I have to make sure that it, first of all it's legal to do so and then second you know if there's even any interest on it if there is interest and uh, yeah something I can do something I'd be interested in doing. Certainly worth it. A lot better than your average apple. That is 100% true. Love these apples. So, I don't really have much else to say about it for right now. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for joining me on my little walk. And I'll see you in the next one. Tot de volgende keer. Thank you for everyone that likes the video, comments on the video, is subscribed to the YouTube channel, and a double thank you if you also share the video around. I truly appreciate it, and it motivates me to keep making more videos.